good to see you this morning. How's everybody? Amen. Amen. We're thankful to the God of heaven for his grace that has blessed us to be here yet again on this first day of the week, Sunday morning. But you know, we, we talk about that something, there's something about uh, Sunday morning that encourages us, but you know, for the child of God, every day ought to be Sunday. <laughs> Because we serve a God who is good to us each and every day. So we are thankful, especially for this day when we are able to come together uh, in fellowship and worship uh, the God of heaven. Good morning to all of you and especially to those who are visiting with us uh, via uh, live streaming and audio to all of our Boulevard family. We are glad that you have joined us and especially to all of our guests and friends, uh, thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time, we welcome you. Uh, if you have been with us, if you are returning, we thank you for being a part uh, of our Boulevard family on a regular basis. God is a God of love. Because he is a God of love, he wants us to love one another. Amen? Amen. We love. Love. Because God first loved us. Point, point at all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. It ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen, somebody. Thankful, and we are thankful to God for his love that we share one with the other. As always, before we enter into our worship, we always like to spend time in prayer, uh, talking to God. As we prepare to serve and worship Him. Uh, but in addition, we uh, want to spend time in prayer on behalf of those who have made their request known. And as always, we ask that uh, as we pray for these various requests, that you pray along with us. And if possible, that you can jot them down uh, and in your own personal private prayer. Uh, you can be in prayer, in prayer for these requests. Uh, and we will continue to pray until God answers. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Sister Marlene Grayson's son, uh, Randall Arnold, is in Baptist East uh, and is believed uh, to have suffered a stroke. Uh, he also had pneumonia uh, and also has COVID 19. So, uh, a lot going on, and we just ask, uh, Marlene asked us to be in prayer on his behalf and as well as uh, her and her family. Brother Richard Clark's sister, Mary Walker, uh, is on life support, and uh, they are requesting prayer uh, for her. Uh, we know that God has the last word. Amen. Amen. So certainly we want to be in prayer for Miss Walker. Also, uh, Sister Brenda Clark is, is requesting prayer for her brother. Uh, we ask for prayer for Brother and Sister Wiggins uh, for their help. Uh, let's continue to remember them in our prayers. Sister Gloria Brown uh, is requesting prayer for her son, Tony, uh, for success in his new role on his job. So let's be in prayer for McCormick in that regard. Sister Kim requests prayer for her mom, Sister Catherine McIntyre, uh, for her help. Uh, brother and Sister Backus, Brother and Sister Kincaid, and Brother Garland Moore are all out of town uh, and requesting prayer for traveling grace. And in fact, I talked to Brother Backus a little while ago, and I believe they are in route this morning back home, so let's be in prayer uh, for them for traveling grace. Uh, Sister Triplett is also out of town uh, with her daughter, visiting with her daughter. Uh, she is requesting prayer as she prepares to return home. She also requests prayer for her son, Ivory, uh, who has uh, health concerns as well. So let's be in prayer for Sister Triplett and her son, Sister Garrison will be having eye surgery uh, on September 22nd, so we want to be in prayer for her for a successful surgery. Sister Lizzie Smith and Sister Jean Horan 
uh, requesting prayers for their sister Shirley Cobb, uh, who was admitted to Methodist Hospital over the weekend, and they are asking prayers that the doctors will determine uh, what's going on, what the cause is of her sickness, and uh, also we want to be in prayer for them uh, as they funeralized uh, their niece on yesterday. So. Family has a lot going on with our lady. Amen. Then we want to be in prayer for Sister Janice Hart, who was in a car accident a few days ago. Uh, she's okay. Uh, Janice Gibson, I'm, I'm sorry. Janice, yeah, I get this right. And I got it written down. I'm, I don't know why I'm all over the place. Uh, Sister Janice Gibbs, who was in a car accident a few days ago. Uh, she is okay, her, her car was full, uh, but we're thankful that she was able to walk away from it. Amen. So let's be in prayer for Janice Gibbs that all will uh, continue to go uh, well with her recovery uh, from uh, this accident. Go with us just now.
Father, we we know that you uh, have have your arms of love and protection around them, and we thank you for keeping them. And Father, we ask that you would continue to bless them, uh, bless their health, uh, that their health will continue to improve, and that they will continue uh, to grow stronger. Father, we pray for uh, Sister Garrison, who will be having surgery on the 22nd. I surgery, Father, we ask that you bless everything to go well with her, uh, that, that the surgery will be a success, and that uh, her health will be uh, restored. We ask you to continue blessings for Sister Liz Smith and Sister Jean Harmon, and for this family as their sister uh, has been hospitalized. Guide the doctors and all who give care to her in, in, in determining the cause of her sickness. And then, Father, help them to do the right thing the right way at the right time. And their health uh, will be restored. And then we ask your continued blessings for this family as they continue to uh, experience grief and bereavement as they have funeralized their niece. Comfort them as only you can. Give them strength and endurance. And Father, we ask that you bless us as extended family uh, to be there for them as they go through this season uh, in their life. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, Sister Janice Gibbs, we thank you first of all for answering prayer for uh, not, not allowing the accident to be worse. Father, we thank you for blessing her to be able to walk away and uh, Father, as she now experiencing uh, some health concerns as a result of the accident. We ask that you will bless her health that it will be restored and that all will continue to go well with her. We just thank you, O God, for being a mighty good God in all of our lives. We need you. Every day and every hour, we need you because we face so much and so many challenges in this life. Father, we Ask now that as we prepare to worship you on this morning, that you will assist us in removing all thoughts that are foreign and help us to focus solely on giving you the worship that you desire, and that is in spirit and in truth. May we be edified, may the devil be horrified. But most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. It's in the name of the mighty marvelous, matchless Savior, we pray in Jesus' name. Let us together serve. I really love the Lord. Yes, I really love the Lord. You don't know what He does for me. He gave me the victory, and I love. Oh, 
amazing that you bless us to be part of here in this white Haven community. Thank you for every member to make us this part. Thank you for the ministry. Willie Workers, the family life. Oh, Father, the only ministry that you bless us to have here in this country. Thank you for the work. Those who are part of these ministries, working hard to make it be what it is, and receiving your grace and mercy as you give us opportunity to do more and more as we continue to strive to be a black person. Thank you for the leadership, our relationship with each other and with the congregation. Thank you, Father, for our building up. For bless us, Father, to begin a great building program. And Father, thank you for the patience of this congregation that we have waiting on those, Father, who, who are doing their very best to complete, complete our project. We know you be with us. We know you bless that which is right and which is good. That's why we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you do. Thank you for all the blessings you bless this congregation with. And thank you, bless us to do together without murmuring and complaining. But with the spirit of Christ, we're doing our very best to reach out in this community. Father, to make disciples and to enhance the ability of the kingdom. Thank you, Father, for the talent and ability you give each one of us. Thank you for the attitude and the mindset that we love you enough that we want to use this talent to, in the service of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless our effort, Father, in this. And then, Father, we will get some. Thank you for those who have been sick and hospitals and surgery. And Father, you have let them go home. Some go among us now. Thank you. There are others, Father, Sister Gary, who left us surgery on the 22nd and it was able to go away. Well. Bless Father, others who are sick in this world, the wicked. Oh, bless them especially. Bless those who are traveling with traveling with them. Father bless Brother Sister Kincaid, Brother Sister Baxter, Brother Moore, and others who I'm not able to name, but bless the word, traveling grace and arriving mercy to and from that destination. Now, Father, we pray that you'll forgive us for our sin. Father, we have sinned. We've gone contrary. We let the tempter to tempt us, and he will yield to his temptation. We're sorry about that, Lord. Forgive us our sins, omit, commit, disposition, unfaithful stood of our time, tired and faith. Lord, forgive us. Please, as we turn from you. We pray for your messenger, Brother Michael Jackson, as he comes. And give us a word from the word in Philippians 4 13. Oh, Father, we know. We know cake is not a part of a Christian attitude or vocabulary. Because we know we can through Jesus our Lord. Keep us, Lord, protect us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and give thanks all. Even now. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, We'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by, and how the ransom singers will be gathered since the end. We'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by, and oh, what joy when we get home, that rest beneath that proudest song, and in Oh, what joy when we get home. 
say that the current state of our society is us, and it seems to be going from, as old folks used to say back in the day, from worse to worse every day. Much of what we attempted to overcome back in the 50s and 60s is now resurfacing only to remind us that we really had come that far. Politics are made a priority while the problems of people, some of which are played out in protest, are pushed aside. And if having to cope with a global pandemic was not enough, natural disasters are occurring from one corner of the nation to the other, pouring fires on one end and hurricanes on another. It almost gets to the point where it seems as if there's very little, if anything, that we can find common in. But Paul gives us an encouraging word. Because while everything around us seems to be crumbling, he reminds us that the child of God ought to have a different mindset. Our outlook should be centered around who we look at and look to. And it shows us that while things might appear to be catastrophic, the child of God can still find a consoling confidence in the midst of crisis. Three things he shows us that we want to try to bring out to you quickly this morning and we'll be done. There is first a remarkable reassurance. We'll see this in verses 4 and 5. Then he will show us after the remarkable reassurance a restful refuge. We'll see this in verses 6 and 7. And then as we try to close verses 8 through 13, he shows us a reliable resource. As we labor under this thought this morning, a consoling confidence in the midst of a crisis. <clears throat> Paul having concluded chapter 3 with the fact that our conversation, our citizenship is in heaven. And we have this glorious hope of Christ returning to take us home to live with him in eternity. Begins chapter 4 by encouraging these Philippian Christians to stand fast, be stationary, if you will, and persevere in the faith. He says, therefore, my beloved, or my brethren dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord my dearly beloved and then he entreats those who had labored with him uh, in the gospel to be on one accord we'll see this in verses 2 and 3 and then in verse 4 he begins to show these Philippians and us that if we are going to experience a consoling confidence in the midst of a crisis, there must be a remarkable reassurance. He says in verse 4, <clears throat> Rejoice. Yeah. Be chill. I'm glad is the idea. Uh, glad. How does that take place? In the Lord. It's, it's one thing to be joyful and to rejoice, but what he says to the child of God, the way that you are to rejoice is in the Lord. How often? Always. And again, I see rejoice. Let your Moderation, your forbearance or patience 
And what he says is, your conduct ought to be consistent with your rejoicing. What you show ought to be what you demonstrate. He says, so that it can be known to all men, the Lord is at hand. If anybody knew about hardship, heartache, trouble, and trial, it was the Apostle Paul, who was often beaten and imprisoned. In fact, uh, he writes this letter uh, to the church at Philippi, Philippi from prison. Uh, he was in prison oftentimes and beaten for the sake of the gospel, but he reminds us that when you got a savior in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of a crisis, you can still rejoice. And when you are a child of God, rejoicing ought to be in your DNA. James said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Peter said, don't think it's strange uh, or out of the ordinary uh, when you have to deal with fiery trials of hundred jobs. When everything around you gets crazy, rejoice. When everything and everybody changes, rejoice. When relationships fall apart and tears are rolling down your face, rejoice. When your finances fizzle out, rejoice. When sickness and grief seem to move in and take up a room in your house, rejoice. And just in case, he says, you missed it the first time. Just in case uh, you need confirmation, he gives a remarkable reassurance. For he says, and again, I say, rejoice. In the middle of your crisis, Paul said, the remarkable, the unusual, that's that word remarkable, uh, the noteworthy reassurance is this. Even in a crisis, there should still be rejoice. I, I know that's easier said than done. But what Paul shows us, what Paul reminds us of, is that if we are truly children of God, there ought to be something different about how we respond to crisis than other people. It ought to be when we don't. Well, he shows us that after we experience the remarkable reassurance, there is then that follows a restful refuge. The Bible says in verses 6 and 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep, that's the key word in this text, your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He says, be careful, don't be anxious, is the word. Uh, don't, don't fret, don't be overlooked. says, uh, don't be anxious, uh, don't be careful for something. He says, be careful for nothing. As a child of God, whatever it is, Paul says, you ought not be anxious about anything you did with in your life. He says, don't fail, don't be over much, cast out, but go to God. In prayer with thanksgiving. Don't just go asking, but go to and thank him. Thank him for even what you're going through. 
because what you're going through is going to prove to be a blessing in your life. And the result is this. The peace of God. The quietness of God. The consolation of God. That passes all understanding. Uh, that is superior to human intimacy. That, that peace that, that can't nobody understand will keep your heart. Here's his, his the idea of this word peace. It is a military term. And it means to guard, to protect, to set a watch. When in the midst of your crisis, uh, and when you got the peace of God down on the inside, uh, you're still able to praise God and rejoice. Uh, there are folk uh, who will be punished. There are folk who ain't gonna understand how it is uh, you can still have a smile on your face uh, when all hell has broken loose in your life. Folks ain't gonna understand how you can still rejoice when you got sickness all over the place, when, when you're dealing with the loss of a loved one. People can't understand how it is you can still rejoice. They can't figure out what's going on, but what they fail to realize is that your heart is being guarded. Your heart is being protected by God. Your heart is secure, and Satan can't get to you because you're being in Christ. Perhaps that's why Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, 13, and 14, ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. Perhaps what Jesus is trying to get us to understand and what Paul reminds us of here in Philippians 4 as to the reason why we ought to have a consoling confidence in the midst of a crisis. When we can still rejoice for God expects for the Christian to be able to do is in the midst of that crisis be able to provide some healing for other folk. While we're in this pandemic, Christian, I'm not be happy or we happy the same way as other folk. We ought not be running and hiding
try to let me try to wrap this up. He showed your finally a reliable resource. The Bible says in verse 8 of this. Finally, brother. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Here's the idea. He says, if there's any value that comes from all of these things that he has listed in this verse. What it does is that it causes you to think about what you need to think about. When you're in a crisis, you can't be wonderful. You can't be all over the place. Uh, be like a fish out of water. Just flipping and flopping around. No. Paul says, if, if there's any uh, benefit uh, for things that are honest and uh, just and right and pure uh, and lovely, uh, virtuous, if there's any praise or anything that's noteworthy, in these things. That's what you ought to be thinking about in the midst of your crisis. You got to focus your mind. You got to have your mindset on serving God and doing the thing that he, you can't allow your focus and your attention to be uh, centered around the problem. You got to allow your mind and your focus to be centered on God. And so often, even as Christians, we allow ourselves to be drawn into uh, thinking the way that we ought not think when we're going through stuff. No. He says you got to think about it. You got to put some effort in. You got to work hard at thinking about what you need to think about. Then in verse 9, he encourages them to emulate what they had learned from him. In verse 10 to 12, he thanks them for their expression of kindness and because of the favor shown, he learned uh, the, the favor uh, shown to him, he learned how to be content in whatever circumstance and condition uh, that he was in. And then in verse 13, he says, I can do all things. Not some things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Why? Because I have a reliable resource. You ought to have a consoling confidence in the midst of your crisis. Because in Jesus is a reliable resource of living water, springing up from a well that won't ever run dry. Jesus is a reliable resource because he is the bread of life. He is the friend of sinners, the holy one of God, the horn of salvation. The light of the world. He is the way. He is the truth. Jesus is our sanctification. He is our redemption. Jesus is our passion. He is our peace. Jesus is our advocate. 
Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus is a reliable resource, and in the midst of a crisis, we got somebody we can come. That's why when I'm in a fight, what keeps me from cracking up? When I'm in a crisis, the reason I can stay calm is because I have a consoling confidence that everything is going to be all right. Because I got a Savior I can count on. I got a Savior I can call on. I got a Savior I can rely on in the midst of all of my problems. Oh, oh, gives us peace. Ah. Uh, and how we can have this confidence. He gives it to us in Romans 8, verse 28. He said, All things work together. All things work in cooperation. One with the other. How? For good. For some benefit to those who are the call. And so the, the, the point uh, that, that, that I want you to understand uh, this morning is that Paul gives us the key in having this uh, consoling confidence when we are in crisis because what he says is that everything we go through is working the good and the bad. All of it, whatever it is, is all working in cooperation one with the other to provide some benefit for our life. That's why, that's why when you go through stuff uh, that's why you can't crash and burn. You can't, can't, can't start uh, spazzing uh, and, and, and get erratic and start making irrational decisions. Uh, because, see, if, if you crash and burn uh, while God is still working everything together, you don't mess around. Uh, when God blesses you, you don't mess around and miss your shot. When God brings you through because you busy uh, crashing and burning, you'll mess around and missing your opportunity with somebody to hold your feet. God will give us a consoling confidence in the midst of a crisis. And I don't care how bad it looks now. That ought to be enough to console us, to keep us and comfort us and help us to know that after a while, yeah. it looks dire now, but after a while, it don't look too good right now. Even 
is not in your personal life. Just the circumstances that, that's going on around it. Uh, you. You've been brought down and you get depressed. As a child of God, you got to think different. You got to look at situations different than other folks do. And maybe there are problems in your personal life. You're dealing with, with sickness, you're dealing with situations in your family, in your relationship. Whatever the case uh, may be, uh, you, you, you got all kinds of challenges coming at you uh, from all sides of life, and, and you got to the point of where I just don't know how I'm going to get through this. Well, if, if you crash and burn now, you're going to miss your opportunity to praise God later on. Because He's doing something in the midst of what you're going to do for your good. You got to see it through. Trust him enough to well. Trust him enough to let him bless you. You might have some scars and some bruises. By the time you get through the other side, through to the other side. But when you look back, those scars and bumps and bruises will remind you how good it is. Yeah. 
do wrong or don't give a, uh, give in right, and we'll mess around and miss heaven. We not only do have to do everything else right, giving has to be a part of that as well. And so, let's be mindful of not only how we should give and what we should give, but let's be mindful of the spirit with which we give. If God wants us to give it the right way, He wants us to do the right thing. He also wants us to do it the right way. We don't want to do everything else right and get given wrong at this day. But while we continue to commend you for your giving efforts, we continue to do well. Let's continue.
this place on yesterday, and uh, it's my pleasure to present to you this morning, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Sherrod and Ayanna Bogan. Y'all stand up. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations. May God bless you for many, many years of happiness. Thank you. God bless you. Y'all actually made it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, man. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, but good to see y'all. Thank you for being here. Now, I believe uh, at some point you all will be uh, relocating to Atlanta for, for a period. Uh, and then uh, you'll be making your way back to Memphis. Oh, thank you. So, as long as y'all know. <laughs> Rod, as long as you know, I'm just on loan. <laughs> All right, that's it. All right. Mama Bean, good to see you. She, she's been here with us almost every week uh, since we've uh, been in in-person worship. Glad to have you. Let's welcome. <laughs> Amen. Now, they didn't stand, but now, uh, they have been worshiping with us I don't know for how long now, for many weeks online, and uh, they're finally here uh, in person uh, this morning, uh, and not only have they been worshiping with us, they have been uh, supporting us financially, amen. amen. Uh, brother and sister Powers, I believe they are visiting from the Ross Road Church of Christ. Would you stand? Brother Maurice and Melissa Powers. Hey, Amen. Let's welcome to the Bulldog. Welcome to the Bulldog. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. We've been in communication, been talking with them, and uh, they have been encouraging us by letting us know how much they have been enjoying our worship online. And they are finally here in person this morning. Now, uh, you know, I hope y'all know. Uh, that we already claimed y'all. <laughs> Amen. So, so whenever y'all get ready, we just let you know. <laughs> Thank y'all for being here. I'm so glad to have you. If I know other are doing business uh, and we miss you, we don't want to overlook anybody. So glad to have you. Sharon's been being here with us from uh, Hall Lake and Levi here. We're glad to have you. Good to see you, Sharon. Constantly in prayer for you. God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. Uh, let me just remind you uh, concerning our uh, age-specific meetings. We met with our senior saints on last Thursday. We had some kind of good time. Amen, somebody. Uh, we we uh, fellowship. Then you know we discussed a few things, but. Mainly, we spend most of the time fellowshipping and uh, just enjoying seeing everybody. Uh, many of us who had seen each other since, really, we uh, had to go to virtual worship back in March. And it was just a joy uh, for uh, many of us to be able to see each other, see faces, and be in fellowship. And uh, thank all of you. Who were able to join in? I believe uh, somebody said that we probably had between 40 and 50 people uh, on that call. So uh, just a good time, a good time. And then uh, we, we're going to continue with those age specific meetings this week, this Thursday at 6 30 p.m. Uh, we'll be meeting with our 41 to 61 uh, year old age group. 41 to 61. We'll be sending information out regarding the uh, Zoom login information and audio uh, call in. So mark your calendars this Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Uh, this is for our 41 to 61 uh, age group. We're looking forward uh, to meeting uh, with you. Uh, we are in our Bible study. Obviously, continue to study for God game plan strategies for abundant living. Uh, we're currently in the lesson of prayer. We'll be finishing that lesson up probably in the next week or two. Uh, we're going to take just a short break from that study. Uh, and Lord willing, uh, we're going to spend a couple of weeks uh, 
teaching from the theme, the right response to race relations. Uh, obviously, with everything that's going on in our society, that, that, that is an issue. And I just believe that as Christians, we ought to have some conversation because if we're not careful, uh, as Christians, we will respond wrong. And we ought to know, even as Christians, the right way we ought to be responding to these specific uh, issues. And I just believe that, that God uh, shows us from the Word of God how uh, we ought to respond. We want to talk about that. Take, take a couple of weeks or so to talk about that. Long we have needed, but for sure, a couple of weeks, uh, how we need to be responding as Christians. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then, Lord's willing, beginning first Sunday in October, for the last uh, several years, October has been family month. Uh, we've been uh, dealing with a series of lessons pertaining to the family for the entire month. And Lord's willing, beginning the first Sunday uh, in October, we're going to be looking at that as we uh, considering uh, the theme fortifying the faith of families to face the future. We know who holds the future, uh, but we want to make sure that the faith of our families are fortified as we face what awaits us down the road. Amen. So we praying about those, and then we look forward uh, to that. If I can believe it, God can achieve. So help me to show it. So the Lord will know. Give God some praise as we prepare to this and serve the Lord with you as our closing prayer and direction and guidance on this. Before the 
unbelief within the world. We pray, Heavenly Father, as we depart from here, you keep us safe. Bless us. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning. I have double duty. <laughs> <laughs>